Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of The Consulog, the week of November 13th through November 20th. And this is an exciting episode with some really cool news to share with you about this past week in tech. Let's hit it. First big news item of this week is Firefox. Firefox is back in the game. Oh yeah. They have released a new version, Firefox 57, or uh, as they call it, Quantum. Firefox 57 is the first official public release of Project Quantum, which is a reworking of the internal cores of Firefox to make it competitive and as fast as modern browsers are today. So if you haven't tried it already, I do recommend you download the new Firefox 57. It is blazing fast. Some of the things that they focused on, obviously the speed, they are really pushing that they have focused very hard on optimizing Firefox to take care of multiple cores because before they weren't able to and now they rewrote the entire core with this uh, engine that they called Servo written in Rust. And that is a very exciting piece of technology that they just managed to include while they were actually still working on Firefox. The second other cool thing about Firefox 57 is there is a new UI called Photon, which is a lot more sleek looking. So if you like new things that look pretty, that is also a very good addition. And the last big thing is that Google is now again the default search engine for Firefox. So that's three big things. The first one is definitely the biggest, where Firefox is now as fast or sometimes faster than Chrome. So if you have been wanting to go back to Firefox, now is the time. It is fast, you have Project Quantum, with Servo, written in Rust, which I find to be most exciting, having Rust in a mainstream application across many computers out there, proving that it is a viable language that can be making solid applications. And in Firefox, you can see it just really put the metal, to push the pedal to the metal and make that thing roar. Welcome back, Firefox. We have missed you. So I have talked about WebAssembly before, and the big news this week is that now all four major desktop browsers support WebAssembly. This comes after Apple and Microsoft have released new versions of their respective browsers, Safari and Edge, and added support for WebAssembly. So this is now becoming even closer to a reality, being able to have native applications in C, C++, whatever, compile it down to JavaScript through WebAssembly and run it in your browsers with all the four major ones. So WebAssembly every day, that dream is becoming reality. So I've talked about code editors in the past. My current favorite code editor is VS Code. I've also used uh, Atom in the past as well. But the big news this week is that both VS Code and Atom released a version of collaborative code editing in their code editors. This was also very funny because they both announced this on the same day. Coincidence? The major difference between these two code sharing features is uh, in VS Code, when you share a code session, you get access to the entire workspace in that person's VS Code editor. That means you have access to the entire get uh, the entire file tree, the entire live editor, or also other tabs. You can also debug together in your own separate workspaces, which is also very cool and very powerful. The caveat with VS Code is that right now it's still in a beta program that you have to ask to be added into. It's not for wide public release yet, it is in development, but not quite yet. On the other side, you have Atom, and that you can actually start using right now. However, that feature set for Atom seems a little bit more limited than VS Code. With Atom, when you add the teletype package, which is how they do the code sharing, you have access to just the current text editor that you see on your other person's code shared space. If I were to share my code with yours, I'd open up the file and then in your shared coding session, you would then see that file as a separate tab. When I change my live text space, then that would change for you in that same tab. So it's a little bit more limited, you don't have access to the entire repo, but it's still a step forward there and also you can use it today. So this is very cool if you do work remotely or just need a way to collaborate with somebody and not have to walk over to somebody's desk because who wants to walk in the office? <laughs> this is a way to do that. So very cool, VS Code, Adam, very exciting and I wanna try it out soon because I like to play with new things, new things, new things, new things, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh, you use Node.js. Every year, Node.js puts out a user survey where they say, hey, people in the atmosphere, how do you use Node.js? Tell us how you use Node.js, because we want to make Node.js even better. So if you do have 10 to 20 minutes on a day, and I'm sure you do, take some time to fill out the Node.js user survey to give feedback to the Node.js Foundation to know to help them know how they should better shape Node.js going forward. So that's a little plug on their behalf. I'm not paid to do that because I don't really 
know them intimately, but this is just me trying to support their cause because I use what they make. <laughs> Last but not least, I wanna talk about this new live in-browser code editor called Code Sandbox. I've become a huge fan of this web application. It is a very rich way to create live web applications that you can share online. It's similar to CodePen or JS Fiddle, but there is something about it that makes you feel like you have your entire code editor in the browser. It's very polished, very robust, and the big news this week is that they have announced version 2.0, uh, in particular of their website where they talk about all the new things that Code Sandbox can do. The big new features are better GitHub integration and better just Git integration, where you can actually clone from GitHub a project into Code Sandbox or vice versa, open up pull requests and actually have this entire workflow in your web browser. So if you're on the go, like on a Chromebook, we don't actually have access to applications, Code Sandbox may be your saving grace to be able to use that remotely. Maybe one day they'll add some offline support. I imagine that's someday in the future. But again, kudos to the Code Sandbox team. I have been enjoying your project so much and I'm looking forward to so many more iterations. Awesome work. That's it. That was the console log. Did it go by as fast for you? Because it felt like it went by really fast for me as well. I've had a lot of fun talking about these exciting new news this past week. The new VS Code and Atom stuff is really, 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 really awesome. And again, I'll be back next week with some more news. The year's almost over. We're almost in December. We're almost in December. No, we're still in the middle of November. <laughs> Hope you have a good rest of the week coding. And uh, if you are in the US, happy Thanksgiving Day, which is coming up this Thursday. And I will see you again on Monday. Sayonara. And see you later. And goodbye. And shalom. And nafwidazen. And gesundheit.